Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all the praise, glory, and honor due to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahushad, Ba'ashim Yahukakudash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. In the name of His only begotten Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. We want to give a double honor to the elder apostles of the great millstone, which are our teachers that rule well, that taught us this truth, and much, much love, greetings, and salutations to the tabernacle of David, the old four elect. All the brethren throughout the four winds of the earth are pushing this gospel and sincerity and truth, are lifting up this banner upon the high mountain. All right, prophesying against the downfall of this wicked ass empire, or right, the empire of you so called uh, uh, white people, all right, which you're known as the Red Hebrew Edomites. That's right, the Bible speaks of. That's your real nationality, okay? And because of the truth coming out about you, now you want to hide up under <laughs> fake love. Yeah. You want you, you want to seek for, for love now, all right? Because we've been preaching about your hatred yeah. that you showed against our people. Nah. And it seems like this the, the, the new John 3 16 is a uh, uh, thou shalt abhor an Edomite. Yeah. All right, that's the I guess that's the new thing now. Well at least I don't I don't know if the if the elites came down and, and had out. a little council about this <laughs> and start telling teaching these little uh, uh, pastors and these little evangelists and just use that scripture. Go to Deuteronomy 23 yeah. and 7. I bet you you can stop them. Uh, <laughs> the problem with that is this. You just admitted you're an Edomite. Yeah, you admitted, up, you admitted that the Edomites are still on earth and that you're one of them. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. the problem with it. And y'all, y'all don't know that y'all set y'all self up with that. Yeah. yeah. So now you acknowledging that the Edomites exist now. Yep. Yeah. And, and now that you, and now that you acknowledge it, now all of a sudden we ain't supposed to abhor you. Right. But what about all the other prophecies that, right. that prophesied against you? God, that pertain to Esau. Let's let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get in, let's get into it. Isaiah 57 and 21. There is no peace, says my God, to the wicked. Hey, that's that's on top. <laughs> hey, that's on top, man. There ain't no peace unto you. Alright, because you was never peaceful with us. If you if we go through every major captivity uh, uh, recorded in our biblical history, you was always hanging around. Hanging around. You, you was, was always you, you was you was the one that forwarded our affliction. Yep. Every time. Yep. As soon as we came out of the uh, wilderness, or we'll, it's like yeah, while we were in the wilderness, yep. you, were, you was the, one of the first nations that we have to have war with. Is that Exodus uh, the 17th chapter? Okay. And then the Lord even uh, told him that we shall have war with Amalek forever. Yep. So that means that if there's going to be war between a, a, a conflict, two conflicting uh, 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 nationalities, yeah. then that means that there was never going to be peace between them to begin with. There was never going to be peace. And the Lord created that from the beginning. Then he said he was going to put, put enmity between uh, thy seed and the woman. Okay? Because who was he talking when he said that? He talked to the, uh, to the, uh, to the son. Which, is, which was a man upon the earth, not a damn snake for real. It was a man with a snake by the spirit. Man originally that became the Edomites. He went into Cain, the spirit moved into Cain, being wicked, and he moved on to Esau. That became the forefather of your people. That's right. right? Yeah. And that enmity was there, and that hatred was always there. Because if you if you lie to somebody, that proves you hate them. If you lie to them and tell them something is true when it's not, or vice versa, you don't love that person, man. Yeah. Alright, you're not looking out for their best interests. What about all the scriptures that uh Go against you. Exactly. You, know, yeah, you, can't, you can't just weigh uh, just one scripture against all the other scriptures. You know, it's, that's that's gonna balance, man. It has to be. It has to be some something deeper to it. You know, and the answer is going into the, the chorus, man. You know, and, and you see that word Edom in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is that word Syria, man. Yeah. and it says a clerical error, man. Yeah. In the concordance. Alright? So you just can't, you know, you gotta go deeper, man. You can't read the Bible in English and take it to face value. You gotta go into the uh to the Hebrew, the Greek, you know. You gotta go deep into the words. Hey, that's why it's like that's why this book is a, a mystery, and the mystery has to be revealed unto you. That's right. Okay, the mystery has to be revealed unto you so you can see uh in plain sight exactly what it is once you have the understanding. Esau is a major uh, um, mystery in the Bible, who he is today, but his, his own history has witnessed against him, 
And we're, we're clearly the, the Israelites, the so-called Negro Latino Native, if we get the sign again, Negro Latino Native Americans, we're, we're the ones that thought of the Israelites. And you can feed from places that are the Israelites there. Okay? We're the, we're the, we're, that was a mystery unto you. And, and that God doesn't love everybody. That was another mystery or, or falsehood told by the, uh, by the church. And that's what they try to use with the John 3.16. Yep. That, that God loves everyone, but uh, they just, they don't uh, take into account all the rest of the scriptures throughout the whole Bible. God, I love you. Know right the most I hate. Where, where is that in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14? Where the Lord is not the author of the future. future. Third, third, right? You can't read John 3.16 and then there's other scriptures in the Bible that says, love the good and hate the evil. Right. Right. You can't read John 3.16 and then it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Right. You can't read John 3.16 and then there's a scripture that says, but I hated Esau. Yeah. And I laid his heritage waste. Yep. That, that, that you was can't read the book of Obadiah yeah. and think that's not going to stay. Exactly. Because, because the book of Obadiah is the, is the nail in the coffin. Yep. It's the one that, that's, that's straight up proved to you that the, once the Edomites are gone off the planet, eradicated off the planet, is when we'll move into that time in the future in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And if we're not in that time if there's Edomites walking around. You just clearly admitted that there's Edomites walking around. You said that I should not have born Edomite. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For the Most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all churches of the saints. Yes. Well, who are the saints? Um, uh, uh, Psalms 140, 148. Yeah, that, the saints are Israelites, right? You don't these these these, these uh, Edomites. They don't go into these scriptures. They just read it for face value. You got to go deep into these scriptures, like your brother was just saying. It's a mystery. And this mystery wasn't given to everyone. It wasn't given to all nations, all right? And when you read all nations in the New Testament, that word ethnos means um, um, a, a tribe, a, a, a specific a nation of people. That's why we go into these words. So how can you, can, like, ahead, how can you be specific when you're supposed to be talking about everybody? Yeah. It don't work that way. You got to generalize to talk about everybody, but the scriptures are specific who this book is for. Okay? I mean, we get this, uh, okay. this word for uh, confusion yeah. in the Greek. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. It's uh, akata, uh, akatastasia. That's the Greek word. And it means instability, uh -huh. a state of disorder. Yeah. Okay. Confusion. Hey, hey, just disorder. These scriptures line up in order. Yeah. It's just like a. I always bring this analogy out, like a math equation, like like algebra, literally like algebra. If you don't have the equations in the right place, you're not gonna get the, the proper quotient, okay. the quotient or sum of the problem, right? If, if these are out of order. That's why everything lines up, and when you put it as uh, being an Assyrian or a Syrian in there, with being Syrian in Deuteronomy 23rd chapter, it lines up with the whole rest of the scriptures, as well as uh, uh, Esau being the wicked and being hated by the Most High God. But first off, they tried to say, God don't hate, God is all love. No, I had that. You um, prove that God got hate for certain situations, certain things, certain people. Well, hold on, don't the scriptures say that the Lord hates all manner of abomination? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We out that's, why he destroyed, that's why he destroyed Enter of Sodom and Gomorrah, because he hated yeah. what they were doing. Right. So he destroyed them because what you do, you know, your, your, your practices and your wicked works, it wouldn't be done if it wasn't you putting it to, 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 uh, to practice. Fine, right. fine. So basically you and that sin that you commit, the Lord looks at, at that act and you as one and the same. Fine, bro. So if you, as long as you commit adultery, the Lord hates you. As long as you commit uh, uh, homosexuality, the Lord hates you. Man. That's biblical. And it, and it showed every time there was major uh, wickedness being done, the Lord would show his hatred through judgment. All right? It would be through judgment. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 6. For the Most High hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. And, and, and Esau, he's, the, he's the, the top ungodly man. He's the most ungodly man. He's the man of sin that's being revealed in these last times. He goes against literally every single scripture that you can think of. Literally every scripture, every law in the, in the, in the Bible, Esau totally breaks. Right. Proving right. his spirit is contrary to, to righteousness. Yeah. So what? So what does that mean? 
The Lord hates you. Okay. The Lord hates him, man. The scripture said so. And you same devils want to have the nerve to act like there shouldn't be any, any hatred. You, you, that should be, you should be the last ones that's coming from. You should be the last people that that's coming from, man. Alright? You should be the last people speaking about hatred. When all you do is show hatred through your actions. Alright? Go ahead, huh? And keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Why? Because he knows how to preserve the ungodly to the day of punishment. Alright? All right? And that's why you devils... All right, when the Lord comes back, you devil's going to still be on top. Okay, he's coming back to dethrone you. He's coming back to, to wage war against you, man. Whoever's sitting on the throne, that's who I'm coming back to wage war against. And you happen to be you damn devils, man. And anybody else on any lesser throne is coming for you, too. That's, that's why he said he's going to have many crowns on his head. Because he's yeah. taking all the crowns, mainly of you elite, you, uh, uh, you Edomite elite bankers. All right, and the rest of these heathen nations. Right. Fuck, and you got Donald Trump on the on the, uh, the, the educational system in America to, uh, uh, to uh, read the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, and try to bring that education back or whatever. Yeah, so he he signed his own death note. Man. Oh God, that's it. You ain't gonna follow the laws that's in this Bible, man. No. You know, you're not you're not meant to uh, do righteousness, man. You, you eat a mice, man. All right. Let me get verse 7. Give unto the good and help not the sinner. Yeah. Okay, I got Psalm 5 and 5. It says, uh, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. And, that, and that's, that's straightforward plain. and plain. Yeah. That's plain. He hates workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin upon sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Like the brother said, you Edomites are not going to keep this law. Oh, Old right. Testament. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's a whole lot of hate scriptures coming yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't y'all people just fucking just go to Blue Letter and type in hate, man. Yeah. Just bring up all, <laughs> all the day. All, all the scriptures on hate, man. And yeah. You should shut the fuck up, man. Right. Yeah, but, but that, 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 that lets you know. All you gotta do is read the Bible. All you gotta do is read the scriptures, and you could be considered a hate. Yeah. Just yeah. for reading the Bible, yeah. because of what the Bible teaches. For reading it. And that, and that just goes to show you uh, the, the hypocrisy of this society. Right. Don't try to put up this book and then be a hypocrite and say, oh, but you're being a hater. You're, 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 you're speaking uh, hate speech. Huh. But we're speaking the words of God. Yeah. You, yeah. Would you agree that these are the words of uh, who you call God? Yeah. Don't be a hypocrite, man. Right. They don't say that to the uh, pulpit, uh, uh, pork chop eating pastors. We're reading out the same book. Yeah. That's because he don't go into the, the scriptures. Right. He going to select few scriptures that his that his his slave master taught him yeah. in the Bible seminary, C3. or he's yeah he's he got that that uh Tax yeah that 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 uh, what's that that jo Johnson Amendment uh, muscle yeah you know yeah yeah even that's an abomination man yeah. not to bring out the full word but I have a problem yeah. yeah. Choose, and the cold part is when you take that the part that they don't want you to talk about, that's the book. Yeah. That's the whole book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was that's the spirit. Yeah. I was in. This is Psalms 119 and 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. And that's how you that's the way you understand this, this book. Yeah. It's by putting precept upon precept. Alright, there's the different scriptures that you can link up. Going back to like when, when it's the, the Lord said he's not the author of confusion. Well, that when, when you put precept upon precept, there is no confusion. Right. You get understanding. Okay? Nothing contradicts if you get its full, the full context of understanding. You get the meat off the bone. All right? So that's how you'll know that the Lord is not one-sided. He doesn't tell you, oh, you're supposed to just love only. Yep. Well, you, if you go into the, the, the precepts, it tells you how, when to love and yep. when to hate. And that's the, that's the Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Yep. There's a time and place for everything. All right. Go ahead. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Yeah, we hate every false way, man. Okay. Things don't line up. That's a false way. Yeah. Hey, if you think about it, if you're walking down in, uh, a road and it forks off, you're trying to choose which way to go. You choose a way and it leads you to a pit or a dead end or something. That's a false way. And that's what the scriptures, out of the right context, will lead you to. Yeah. That God loves everybody. You should not abort either. It's, it's, it's like the saying: to, 
tell a lie, you got to tell another lie to cover it yeah, up. You so you, you you go down that road of uh, John 3.16, then you got to cover it up with another lie. Yeah. And, and that brings nothing but confusion, more confusion. Right. Okay, you couldn't, you would not have been able to quote John 3.16 to King David. God. You wouldn't have been able to do that. All right, right. All right? Because first of all, King David, he was a man after the Most High's heart. And even though he, he, he I mean, he loved the Most High. But, he had a shortcoming like every other man, but that was hard. But there were things that you would consider hateful that he did. Yeah. Is he in, was he in transgression? Mm -hmm. let's, let's get some accounts on King David and what he had to do in order for uh, uh, the, for him to get the throne. Can I, can I read this real quick in Isaiah 28? To show what we're doing here. Um, Isaiah 28, and uh, we'll start up at verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, because the thing about it, the way these scriptures is written, not every prophet had the full prophecy. They had a chunk. So when it was being jotted down, the chunk they had would line up with another prophet's chunk, with another ancient prophet's chunk, and finally they would all get the full understanding when, when, when the time was revealed. Okay, how was shot to piece it all together? Okay? So now these days we get to see the full scope of all the prophecies and putting the chunks together where they make sense now. Right? It says, um, line upon line, here a little and there a little. With, with uh, stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak this, uh, speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest where with he may cause the weary to rest when you get that full understanding. Because a lot of you that think you can pick this book up and your pastor will teach you, or you have your own understanding that God gonna come and bless you with it, you, you wrestle trying to get the understanding out of this. We're in full uh, 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 rest mode on the understanding of this Bible. We understand what all the pieces mean and, 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 and the big picture of it all, okay? That's, that's when you can be at peace with yourself with the understanding of it, okay? When you can see the big picture. It says, um, and this is the refreshing with yet they would not hear but the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backward and be broken snared and taken so the same way that we put it together to get the understanding the same way that it leads y'all to, to, uh, to dead ends okay but you need that that interpreter or that teacher or that seer to, to, to break it down for you and, and that's what we're doing. And ultimately, you need the the spirit, the inspiration. Right. Uh, right. That's the that's that's the that's the energy, the spirit that gives us this understanding, man. Right. Okay. But but, but you also need men that have the Holy Spirit to interpret it for you. Time. All right. But hey, this is only going to be plain unto the holy. But this will this will be a stumbling block to the wicked. You can't put the pieces of the puzzle together. You don't have the blueprint. The Lord didn't give that give that to you. You're not going to be able to put it together to see the bigger picture. It's not your DNA, man. That's it, man. Okay. Hey, wisdom will not dwell in a malicious soul. Right, right. Okay. But anyway, let's deal with uh, King David. Somebody give me Psalms uh, uh, 60 and also uh, Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms 18 and 40. We're going to read about King David and his hatred. Psalms right? 60? And, and, and I would hope that. If, if, if they decided to put the Bible in the, the educational system in schools, <laughs> have them read the whole book. Read all through Genesis, through Psalms. Read the, all the Psalms, and, 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 and look how bloody it gets at times. Hey, that's the same reason a lot of you people don't like the Old Testament. Because of how bloody and brutal, and straightforward, austere, and honest the, uh, the, the, the Old Testament is. Time yeah, they, they watch that on TV and enjoy it, man. They, they, yeah. they worship that shit, man. That's a big deal. Yeah, man. Man. They, they, Walk, Walking Dead and had yeah. more sex and murder and crime and, you know, and, and Game of Thrones. There's been so much of that. Yeah. And you people will watch that and, and won't miss an episode for one week. Sit there and be on the, uh, the blog all week trying to hypothesize right. about next week. But then when the scriptures come in, the scriptures are true. When it comes to this, yeah. oh, that's, a, that's a fairy tale. That's a fable book. 
when, when the things that are said in this book are actually happening? Or are you despising because of the gore that's written in this book? The morning lamentations of woe that's written in this book. These things that, that took place go along with secular history. These things match up with, with, with history. All right? It's just the history book of the Israelites. It's our history book. It's from our perspective. Our perspective. Too. Come. Yeah. That's right. Um, this Go ahead. 16 and uh, 8. Yeah. yeah. So 8 and 9. All right. Yeah. Psalm 60, verse 8. Moab is my wasp. Over Edom, I will cast out my shoe. Felicia, tri triumph thou, thou because of me. Read that again. Moab, Moab is my wasp. Uh -huh. Over Edom, Will I cast out my shoe? Over Edom. Will I cast out? Well, I mean, would you consider that racist? Huh. Would that be yes. hateful? Is that a hateful thing to, to, to sing about? Yes. Especially sing understanding about what, he, what King David <laughs> had to do to get all the nations subdued so up under his feet. Right. Huh. When you go into the history, it's a reason why King David couldn't, uh, he wasn't allowed to build up the temple. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time. Too, much blood, too time. much blood on his hands. Time, man. bro. So you would call him a hateful murderer and a racist. But King David. Look at all the bloodshed King David had to uh, uh, um, do just to get peace yeah. for 40 years. That's all, you know? And so true. imagine the bloodshed that Yahweh Shai is going to have to bring to this place for us to get peace for eternity. Yeah. Right. It, it, yeah. 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 Time, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Time. We only had peace 30 years of the 30, 30 years? No, yeah. no. 40. 40. King David, 40, 40. of the South. Oh, 30 of King, King David. David. It took him 30 years to do it. Yeah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Yeah. And it reads, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. Yeah. I came not to send peace, but a sword. It is. He gotta bring a sword. He gotta bring that division. He gotta he gotta subdue all the other nations around us just so they don't raise up with their wickedness. Just so they stay in subjection and stay under rule under under righteousness. That's what it takes. That's why under King David and King Solomon, we live so so wonderfully then. We was on a, the, the proper perspective, but now we're gonna be on such a higher level under Yahweh Shai and King David. Okay. That's why King David still gets his position back. Because he did the right things. Because right, ultimately King David did foreshadow what Yahweh Shai is coming back to do. Right. He went and he slaughtered all those nations and we got 40 years of peace from that. Yeah. Yahweh Shah is going to come back and wage war against the nations, and we're going to get everlasting peace. Right. Now, when you look up, uh, uh, based off of what, uh, what the brother had read, uh, uh, over Edom when I cast my shoe, that's a that's an actual idea. That's that's insane. And basically what it represents is, when you cast your shoe upon something, that means you're about to take it for your possession. Yeah. Now, when you go into a, uh, the word is uh, Nayal, it basically means sandal or shoe. It says uh, in the, the Hebrew child D lexicon, it says it was customary symbolically to deliver a shoe, hence casting down a shoe upon any country was a symbol of taking possession. Uh -huh. Upon Edom will I cast down my shoe, i.e. I will take possession of it. Mm. I will claim it as my own. Yeah. So that was, a, that was basically like a prophecy, man. Because what's gonna happen when we, when we, when we get this devil in, in slavery, you know? and after a thousand years in. after we didn't did what we had to do with his ass and, and, and get rid of him, the land is going to be given to, uh, to Judah. Right. The land of Judah is going to be extended. Yeah. Okay? It's going to be no more Edomites. They ain't going to uh, be able to occupy that land. Okay? So that, hey, what King David said, that, <laughs> he, he, he prophesied that, man. Yeah. Now, would you consider that hateful? Hey, but I thought the scriptures say, thou shalt not bore Edomite. Why is King David saying that? Why would King David say he's going to cast his shoe over Edom? Yeah, they act like King David no Deuteronomy 23. Right. right. Yeah. On, but he's the same man that said, I will meditate in thy law. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says he meditate day and night in the law. Was that Psalms, uh, the second chapter where he says that? Okay. I'm pretty sure you devils don't know more scriptures than King David. Right. Okay. Uh, get uh, Psalms 18 and uh, 40. Start at verse 40. Oh, matter of fact, Salak, Salak, you still in Psalm 60? Read that next verse. 
solid six. I'm gonna start at eight again and keep going, all right? Yeah. First eight. Just read the next verse and that's okay. start here. Yeah. First eight? Yeah. yeah. Start at eight, Lord is my washbuck. Over Edom, I will cast up my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Uh -huh. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Now why is he why is he saying that? Why is he asking who will lead me into Edom? Because basically he's asking for the Father to be with him when he goes into Mount Seir and start lobbing heads off. Man. Time, bro. That's, yeah. what, that's what that's hey, talking time. about. They forgot all the acts of the mighty man, yeah, King man. David and the mighty man. Yeah. Let's say a thousand at thy right hand. Yeah. And on the left hand side, two thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah. yeah hey, what? This mighty man, one man was slaying <laughs> a thousand men. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, they was they was they was they was killing whole cities. Infants, women, yeah. men, the nice. cattle. Yeah. All through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, the Lord gave King David those direct orders. Take, taking and raping the uh, women and making them concubines. Kind. Kind. Yep. Putting them to shame. That's right, man. Uh, uh, somebody get. Uh, you got I, got, I got Psalms 18 and 40. Go ahead. Psalms 18 and 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, hey, so but like when you had a neck of somebody, you have have them in complete control where yeah. you can take their yeah. life. Yeah. You can you are in complete control of somebody. That's that's the most weakest point of somebody. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But He answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out he as what? the dirt. He what? <laughs> <laughs> then I beat them small as the dust before the wind. That's like you picking up some, like some, like some dust, and you cast it, and it's, it's nothing. It's going to blow away. It's tossed around. Hey, and are we going to get that power back to Time. do that again? You okay. damn right we are. Hey, then don't the scriptures say we shall rule over them with the rod of iron? Come on. I will give you I will give you like the he heathen for an inheritance. Come on, man. David was all about possessing you heathens. Come on. Because he understood that was the big picture that God. that yeah. how it wanted for us. That, that goes right into um we, we bring it up, um, second edges of the sixth chapter at the end of that chapter. The whole thing was say, if the world now be made for our sakes, why don't we uh, 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 why don't we possess why don't we have an inheritance of the, the world? But the real inheritance of the world is the world itself and all the other people that are not Israelites within it. That's the real blessing that that the Most High God Yahweh will have for us when He set this whole thing up through Yahweh Shai. Exactly. See, that's why a lot of you jakes now because you've been in slavery for so long. You. None of you niggas will be able to be like King David and his his uh, his army, or yeah. the Tabernacle of David. That's why you couldn't be a part of that, man. Because King David had a he had a warrior and a rulership mentality. Right, man. right. Niggas is too emotional, man. You niggas are way too emotional. You wouldn't believe in uh, putting a finger. Some of you niggas, you, you don't even believe in touching the Edomite. Right. Yeah. You these know. Ain't got order either. Yeah. You know? These niggas will let Edomite. They'll like you, like you, I think you alluded to yesterday. They'll let a nigga. If nigga go through their hood, yeah, they, they ready to chop his damn head off. He might oh, walk, walk, walk right through your neighborhood. You say, oh, here you go, sir. You need anything. They pull over. Hey, you guys got directions? Yeah, let, let, yeah. let Jake come through there. You carjacking Jake. Yeah. But you let Make him say, Making him strip and all that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cr crazy, man. Jake, Jake, Jake ain't but all. But the Lord is going to put his spirit back on his men, his elect, to, to, to put hands on you Edomites when he, the Lord give us those, those powers back. Right. Yeah, go, go back. Uh, uh, verse 42 Then did I beat them small as the dust Before the wind I did cast them out As the dirt in the streets Thou hast delivered me from the, from the striving of the people And thou hast made them the head of the heathen Thou hast what? Made, has made me the head of the heathen You became the head of the heathen Okay That means what? I'll, I'll, I'll become Lord is our Lord, so he's our head, yeah. and we're uh, our, our wives, we're their Lord, so we're, we're, we're their heads. 
and we're gonna be masters and lords over the nations. That's right. Just like King David, when he was on the throne, he was a hey, he was lord, man. All, hey, kings are, are lords, man. Okay, masters. And um, Sarah called uh, Abraham lord. Yeah, yeah. He, he had possession, uh, uh -huh. position to rule over. Yeah. I want to give a quick analogy about your modern day masters over you, Jakes, right now. Your boss. Your boss has, has complete rule over you. He is your lord or your master over you right now. If you don't believe it, let that man, let you do something he don't like and he fire you, right? He fire you, then guess what? You lose your house, you go on the street, you catch pneumonia, you die. He has complete control over your livelihood, man. Yep. It, you know, how you live. How you live. And thou hast made me head of the heathen, a people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of the heathen, yeah, go ahead. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers should submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. All right. That strangers talking about you other nations, not the Israelite not living in the land. Right, yeah, that's been cried out. Right, right, right. These devils try yeah. to, you know, they try to butcher the scriptures, and they don't go into the the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Hebrew, which is that's what you were supposed to do to, to, to differentiate between different words. All right, you have a stranger in the, uh, in, in the Israelite foreigner sense of the word. And you also have the heathen sense of the word, which is uh, the Hebrew word is a uh, nakar. You have nakar, and then you have the uh, Hebrew word gar. Which goes back to uh, uh, Gershom, Gershom yeah, yeah. the son of uh, Moses. Okay, the, the, those strangers is talking about the the, uh, the, the heathen, the Nakar, man. Okay, now but what did King David literally have to do for this to happen? He had to do some hateful acts. He had, he had to he had to do a lot of uh, 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 killing, man. Okay. If somebody can get that in the first first Kings eleven, somebody can also get a uh, uh, second Samuel eight. I got, I got a quick one. Second Samuel eight and uh, fourteen. I got I got a quick one. Uh, first Samuel chapter uh, twenty twenty five verse thirteen. It says, and David said unto his men, Gird you on every man his sword. And they girded every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went up David about 400, and two, 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. By the stuff. So my, my point being, they all got girded up for war. They were getting their swords ready. They're not getting their swords to go have a talk. They're going to war. They're going to war. And don't say, um, um, the Most High is a man of war. Yeah. So how was his name? Yeah. And David did a lot of war. Why do you think they shared the same mind state? Okay. Uh -huh. Most High said he's a man after his own heart. Same mind mind state. I, I gotta put everybody in subjection. Yep. And the only time we're gonna have real peace is when the nations are subdued, man. Yep. Right. We'll never have peace as long as our enemies are on top, man. Especially Esau. Uh -huh. He knew that he had to put Esau down and the other nations for there to be a uh, world peace, man. All right, so uh, what did I call for? Uh, I got, uh, oh, you said First Kings. Uh, 11, yeah. First, King, First Kings 11 and uh, 14. It's First Kings 11, verse 14. Because right, remember, he was uh, when he was uh, 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 prophesying, when he was singing, he said, who will lead me into uh, 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 Edom? Yeah. So he was making that prayer before he went down into Edom. Let's see what King David did when he went to Edom. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 14. And the Lord stirred up an ad adversary unto Solomon. Uh -huh. Hadad, the Edomite, he was the king, king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass when David was in Edom, and Joab, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain, after he had smitten every male in Edom. He smitten every male in Edom. Yeah. King David and, and, and the captain of his, uh, his, his army. Yeah. Okay. They sent them devils just, just, just running, man. Okay. And you better believe it was gruesome. Just, just, just watch those old uh, war movies, man. 
bloodshed, blood squirt, yeah. heads like, rolling. Yeah. Like uh, Braveheart. Like Braveheart, yeah. like Gladiator. Yeah. Okay? Them old battle uh, war movies, man. The Germanians. Yeah, man. You better believe it was real, it was nasty, man. Okay? If they, if they made this into a movie, y'all be like, man, King David, god damn. When they make this into a movie, <laughs> what I was gonna say was, uh, the difference is everybody in the world, the way the world is set up now, everybody's pussified in this world. Right oh, yeah, yeah. Back then, it was hard men. Man. War and killing was, was easy. You see it in them favorite shows we just talked about. The Walking Dead, they killed the Walking Dead. Remember the, the beginning of Walking Dead, they were, they were trying to figure out are these people alive or dead? Yeah. Well, you go to a show like uh, Game of Thrones, them people are alive. Hell yeah, yeah. But they were killing them just the same, indiscriminately. Depending on the situation. Hey, they were they, they were taking spoil they, on that show. They take yeah. spoils of women. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if they if if the if the, uh, if the king wanted wanted your uh, throne siege, and they were going to wage war against your family, yeah. the spoil the, the children and the and the wives or the daughters they would get uh, uh, snatched up. Yeah. That was that was uh, what you call spoils of war, man. Right. And the women they actually they actually have to pace themselves for if something like that was to happen. Yeah. Like if they if they husband would have to go to war. And yeah. they and they husband and they, and, they, and he loses and yeah. they come and they basically stick they, they they flag in the ground. They gotta they gotta basically deal it's with the really fact that they, you know, hey, we're 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 taking we're we're their property now. Hey, and you see that happening today. Yeah. There's an I mean I've never seen so many Edomite women hopping on Jake, man. Yeah. Uh, but we ain't even have that war yet. That's what I'm it, saying. It, it, that they even, but they see the that, power It ain't even happened yet, and they're already starting to shift. Yeah. And try to come with us. We ain't even in our power yet, man. Yeah. So how much more will we do get that glory, man? Yeah. Call Lord Yah yeah. Bashi You know? Oh, and Salakia. And what was King David doing when he was killing all the males? Because notice they only said, he was slaying all the males. Yeah. So what what was he doing with the women and the children? <laughs> do, do we need to go into the law on that? Right. Was that Deuteronomy, uh, the, the 20th chapter, and the, and the 21st chapter? He was keeping the, 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 the laws, man. Shave the head. Yeah. All right. Put him, put him away for two, uh, 30 days. Yeah. Bathe him. His favorite scent, fragrances. Yep. Yeah. You looking for it? Yeah, I'm good right here. Go ahead. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he cut off every, every male in Edom. Wait, so he, it was, it was for six months. Six months. For a period of six, you waged a war against the uh, town for six months, just killing off the men. And then some of them, you know, they, they had uh, refugees that escaped. Yeah. And when you go into the history, <laughs> a lot of them were running down to uh, Egypt. I'm glad you said that because they'll say, well, it says, he killed everyone in Edom, so the Edomites were done, done away, away with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Edomite tried to use that before. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. They ain't never playing, live nowhere else. Yeah, right. Because how you get the Idumians yeah. when you read the Maccabees? Yeah. yeah. Before that, for this one. What about uh, uh, the the Herodians? Yeah. Those are all Edomites. Yeah. So you can't you can't you use that, all right? I no. What it was, they were slaying a lot of Edomites. And the ones that were remaining, that uh, that survived, they ran down into um, uh, Egypt. They fled into other territories. Okay. And then they had to preserve themselves. They had to uh, post procreate to, to to keep that line going. And then eventually, uh, after Solomon uh, 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 passed and the kingdom got split, that was when uh, uh, Edom started to revolt against Judah again. You read that in Second Kings. I believe like the eighth chapter, man. Okay. Was that it? Um, Y'all read the uh, 17. Then Hadad fled. Matter of fact, Salaki, I, yeah. I was, <laughs> it was already there. Salaki, yeah. look at the scriptures. Then Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him to go into Egypt. They went to Egypt, so that's where they went to fled. Yep. Notice how Egypt. To, to, to everybody in the in the in the Levant in the Middle East, Egypt was basically like a, a, a place of refuge. Yeah, yeah. You know, you seek asylum. All it was always right there in Egypt. Man. You know why? Because the, the, the army wasn't built up after that that flood. They, they you know, oh, yeah. they've been washing oh, yeah. out, but they took. Yeah. 
but I mean, it was just kind of special how that, how that happened. Like, yeah. Hey, Dad, being yet a little child, and they arose out of Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which gave them, which gave him a house and appointed him victuals and gave him land. So the Egypt, the Egyptian was even given his devil, yeah. you know, all type of, uh, 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 you know, diplomacy. Yeah. And, and that you know, shows he, you he gave him a home, gave him, you know. Yeah, that, that shows you how all these he, these nations were confederated against um, Jake. You know, they was always cordial with yeah. each other, but when it came to Jake, it, it was not, it was not like it. They, they all, they all knew that we that that, yeah. that we were the enemy, man. Right. Hey, because you know? I, the big picture was to, to subdue all the other nations. We were the one nation that could do it. Edom almost almost got there, but we were for sure the only, the one nation that could subdue the whole earth yeah. through the power of Yahweh by Shimei Shah. Yeah. That, 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 that was the yeah. yeah. What was the other scripture? Deuteronomy 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted. Uh, to that exact point. Somebody get that in uh, Luna Corporal. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight. Eight. Let me read it. Deuteronomy? Yeah, you can get that. Deuteronomy 20, I'm going to start up at uh, 13. It says, And when the Lord Yahweh thy power hath delivered it into thy hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, so even all, the, all that, but all that pertains to their house, are right, their cattle, their children, everything that that comes with their inheritance. House is a larger set of house, not yeah one 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 place that you live, but the house of what their their land is. Your is land, for. Your yeah, yeah, your substance. Yep. Yeah. It says, uh, "All that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shall thou take unto thyself." And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies when the Lord thy power has given thee. Yep. It says, uh, thus said, thus shalt thou do unto all the cities that are very far off from thee, which are not the cities of these nations. And that was funny because uh, Yahweh Shai is going to fulfill that law. He's going to go and subdue all the nations, 100%. It says, um, yeah, yeah, but the cities of these people with the Lord thy power do give thee for an inheritance. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. <laughs> nothing that breatheth. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord Yahweh thy power hath commanded thee. Okay, so that was and that was pertaining at that time yeah. when we was getting ready to go and inherit our land. Yeah. That was what we were supposed to do. In that land out. In, in, in uh, the land of Canaan. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We don't want nobody to come back and say we used to live here. This is ours. Yeah. Yeah. You can't come back and be like, no, no, no. I used to live right over there. Nope. Yeah. Everybody gone. Yeah. Every everything breathing. So, so basically, would it, when King David went into Mount Seir, what, what do you think he did? He took those women, all right, and the, and the, and the children for servants, all right, for, for handmaids, you know, maid, uh, 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 men servants, maid servants, all right, and you can pop your your maid servants. They could be they could be your concubines. If they're, if they're yours, yes. If they're your wife's, she have to give them to you. Exactly. I want to read it a little more, just a couple more verses. It says, uh, that they teach you not to do after their abominations. That's why you get them all out that land, yeah. right? It says, uh, which they have done unto their gods, should, so should ye sin against the Lord your power. Hey, they can eat, they will, they will, that's what happened to us a lot of, all the times, really. We leave some alive, and then all, all of a sudden they, um, they would teach us one thing, and the moment one got taught something, it would spread like yeah. wildfire. Before you know it, our whole nation was ascending against your house, yep. weakening our people. All That's right? what the same thing Esau did to this day. Yep. By you know how they say that they they, they slayed the uh, slayed the man. Yep. 
the that's what Esau is doing to us, taking the man out of the home, so we can give the woman the philosophies to, to, to give to the children, man, and it destroys the house. Uh huh. The first night, it's like the first night, it says, uh, "When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing the axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down." But basically, I, I was just saying, like, we did it the righteous way, though. We didn't just burn it all out and kill everything in there. Like, you know, like Esau, we just killed the people. Right. We just killed the people out there. Yeah, we don't. We, when we went into war, we didn't turn. We went to war with a with a city. We didn't turn it into no damn wilderness. Yeah, when we wanted to keep a city, we wanted the fruits of that city. We wanted, if y'all got some beautiful peach trees, we want the peach trees. Unless the Lord said, yeah, unless the Lord said, destroy it, like He told uh, uh, King Saul. Yeah, unless He told us to do it. Yeah, destroy. destroy them and their cattle. And the cattle, yeah. yeah. Esau, he'll just drop a whole bomb on this shit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I would just destroy the whole land. I would just make sure nothing grows again. Filling up with all type of yeah, chemicals. He just, he'll just destroy a city. He won't even consider. If you go take it and you want the resources, then won't you do it the right way? It shows you he don't even follow this book, man. But but he tried to use this book in the beginning yeah. to, 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 to put us in slavery. Uh -huh. He probably used these same scriptures, yeah. these laws that yeah. we're bringing no, out to justify coming to uh, just uh, colonize, right. man. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't do it right. right. He didn't even do it right, man. Yeah. Feels like he would do that. Yeah. And we, that's, that's that's exactly the, vibration, we the vibration and the connection that we have with this book and the words of this book, we, we bowed down and took it. We're like, damn. That's to beat the shit out of us, and then read a scripture, and I felt that scripture. Now yeah. realizing it was meant on the other side when, once it comes into our power, like like worth of a nation, we brought up. Y'all got it. This is Second Samuel chapter eight and verse one. And there, and after this came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methergama. Out of, the, out of the hand of the Philistines, and he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground, even with two lines measured he to put to death. And with one full line he kept alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. Okay, so uh, that sounds familiar. They brought gifts. <laughs> That means that once he basically subdued them, they had to give up, you know, tribute. Yeah. Yep. Sounds familiar, like the people prophecy just sounds just that's like that. Yeah. That's what's, that's what's getting ready to happen when the Lord returns. Yeah. Go ahead. David Smoke also had 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 his Hey, but ain't this hate? Ain't, ain't this right. hatred? Smoking all the people, killing them, striking them down. Yeah. I mean, so if we say that we go the Holy Spirit to the Bible that we're going to do this to you. I mean, are you going to say the same thing about uh, King David? Mm -hmm. That he that he's a hateful he was a hateful man, and that say, these people that did that they were hateful people. They're going to say King David, like you said, Yahweh shot. Yahweh needs to apologize for destroying <laughs> yeah. uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. They're going to say King David yeah. needs to apologize for destroying those Philistines and those Canaanites and all, all these other nations, yeah. the Moabites. Get the hell out of here. All right, verse three. David spoke also. Hadadazer, the, the son of Rahab, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates, and David took from him a thousand chariots, uh -huh. seven hundred horsemen, twenty thousand footmen, and David hawked all the chariot horses, but reserved to them for a hundred chariots. Uh -huh. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor Hadadazer, king of Zobah, David slew of them Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus and the Syrians.